This recording is going to cover the process of micturition. And micturition is a word that means it's a process by which we void urine um, from the bladder. Um, it comes from a Latin word um, that means uh, desire to make water. That's where it comes from. So the urine, which originated from the the kidneys will travel down the ureters and, and then be stored here in the urinary bladder. Now at a certain point in time, uh, when it's an appropriate time, we will void the bladder and the, the urine will exit via the urethra. Now in the males, remember the urethra is much longer than in the female, and but the process of voiding the bladder we need, we to make it obviously a lot easier, you need the, the muscle of the bladder, which in the wall is called that detrusor muscle. So the detrusor muscle, we want to contract. Um, the We want the internal urethral sphincter, which you see up here at the neck of the bladder, here in the female, here in the female, in the male, we want that relaxed. And we also want this, here, which is the external urethral sphincter to relax. So let's kind of go over though the innervation so we can figure out what's gonna happen. So the innervation to the bladder and the urethral sphincter muscles include the following. So you have sympathetic innervation via the hypogastric nerve and it innervates the detrusor muscle and it inhibits its contraction and it also um, keeps the um, internal, we're gonna kind of just go up here. This picture's not very good. The internal urethral sphincter keeps that contracted. Now the parasympathetic innervation is via the pelvic splanchnic nerves. And if it's left unopposed, it triggers contraction of the wall of the bladder, the detrusor muscle. Um, and but we'll talk about the in order for the internal urethral sphincter muscle is the you will have inhibition of the sympathetics um, plus if the pressure inside the bladder is high enough it's going to force it open now we have the pudendal nerve innervation to the external urethral sphincter which is under voluntary control you have to have inhibition of that for the external urethral sphincter to relax so the urine can leave so, um, and we'll talk about um, some of what you see up here in a little bit. So we want, these are the things that you want to be able to avoid the bladder. You want the detrusor muscle here on the wall to contract. You want the internal urethral sphincter open as well as the external urethral sphincter, okay? It's the internal is gonna be right up here at the neck of the bladder. So both of them you want relaxed um, so we can void the, the bladder. Now, just think about it as an adult is, you know, you're sitting there, you're producing urine as we speak, your bladder is filling up, the detrusor muscles relaxed. It's not contracting that sympathetics are active, keeping that bladder from, from contracting. That internal urethral sphincter is contracted. The external urethral sphincter is contracted because the pudendal nerve is working. Now, as it's filling, once it gets to a certain level, you have that first urge that you need to urinate, and it happens automatically. But the thing is, if you're continent, that means you're able to hold the contents of your bladder, and you're an adult, and that's actually an adult, hopefully we're continent, you can delay going to the, to the, um, to the bathroom, is at some point that urge to urinate will subside and we're going to go over that how that that happens you will tighten your sphincter but at some point the urge to, to urinate subsides now it will continue to fill up and that bladder will stretch and remember that bladder has that ability to expand it has those rugae which are those folds that we have in there that allow for expansion they're mucosal folds um, you have that transitional epithelium those cells are able to stretch out and at a certain point when the bladder gets a little bit fuller and you're like, okay, I think it's about time I need to go. If it's an appropriate location, you're the, in the right time, you're going to 
relax that external urethral sphincter. What also will happen is the detrusor muscle will contract. That internal urethral sphincter is going to be opened. It's going to be forced open because of the pressure in there, and you'll be able to avoid the urine. Well, let's go over some of the steps that are involved in this. So you actually have, in an adult, more than one reflex. So we have the micturition reflex that is controlled at the level of the spinal cord, and it's S2 through S4 segments. We have a, a micturition center in the sacral spinal cord. What it will do, ultimately, is you have increased parasympathetics um, activation, so you have the contraction of the detrusor muscle. You have decreased sympathetics because remember they oppose the contraction of the bladder. Plus, it's going to relax, help relax that internal urethral sphincter here, and you will have inhibition of the the um, motor through the pudendal nerve, and so the external urethral sphincter will relax and you avoid the urine. But we also have a micturition center up in the brain. Is at the same time as that, we had mentioned that urge to urinate comes, is it's being sent to the brain, ultimately goes to your cerebral cortex, you're like, hmm, I have to go. But we have trained our ability, um, uh, it's actually a learned reflex, that that we have a this um, a learned reflex, you know, called toilet training, that it inhibits the micturition reflex over here until it's de you've decided it's an appropriate time to go. And the pons is very important in that. And the pons has two centers, a storage center. This is like, okay, it's not an appropriate time to go. We're just going to store it. If you have the pontine micturition center, it acts as a facilitator. That would help with what you see going on here. But this is has to be trained. This is where toilet training comes into play. If you're not toilet trained, you're just you're not going to have this higher brain um, centers being involved to say, okay, it's not appropriate time. Those those urges subside. You're just going to urinate. So that's when the babies have um, diapers. So let's look at this a little bit for more in depth. So the micturition reflex, uh, specifically when we're talking about it's taking place at the sacral spinal cord starts with stretch. So you stretch the walls of the urinary bladder as that volume increases. So we have sensory information that's being carried along the pelvic nerves. And that goes to the sacral spinal cord. And you have a very simple reflex where you have that increased parasympathetic, so the detrusor muscle contracting, the decreased sympathetic, so that internal urethral sphincter opens up plus the pressure in the bladder will open that up. And you have decreased some motor nerve activity, so through the pudendal nerves, the external urethral sphincter will open and you have that process of micturition. Now, that would be a simple spinal reflex. That's what's happening in children that have not been toilet trained yet. But what happens as we get older? Well, we have two, the afferent, um, fibers are going to stimulate two different neurons. One's that local pathway that you see here with this simple uh, spinal reflex. Another is a central pathway, is that afferent information is going to travel up the spinal cord. It's going to, um, an inner neuron will relay that signal to the thalamus. The thalamus then will, uh, will have projection fibers from the thalamus that goes, um, to the cerebral cortex, and that cerebral cortex is then going to, you know, determine, say, oh, my bladder's a little bit full. Now, the thing is, if it's convenient at the time, you will, um, we're going to uh, allow for micturition to occur, and it's going to be controlled by the pontine micturition center, which is going to act as a facilitator. And so you'll see all these events, as we said here take place. But if it's not an appropriate time, we want the pontine storage center active. And so inhibitory impulses will travel down the spinal cord and it's going to inhibit all those things that would 
promote micturition. So you have decreased parasympathetic, increased sympathetic, increased activity from the pudendal nerve, which has the somatic nerve fibers. And that urge to, subs to, to urinate subsides. And when it's an appropriate time, then we'll switch to this right here. Okay. Well, let's talk about some conditions that could affect um, your bladder and affect your continence, if you're continent or not. So let's kind of discuss this thing called neurogenic bladder. So this is where people have um, a, a lax bladder control, either due to a brain, a spinal cord, or a peripheral nerve condition. Um, so remember, a lot of muscles and nerves have to work together for the bladder to be able to hold the urine until you're ready to empty it. Um, you know, the impulses go back and forth between the brain and the muscles involved in the bladder emptying. Now, if they're damaged, if there's any nerve damage by either some sort of illness or some sort of injury like a spinal cord injury, um, the muscles are not going to be able to regulate um, or maybe tighten or relax at the, at the, the appropriate time. So I'm going to talk about uh, just a, a three of them. There's more than one type of neurogenic bladder. The first one's called atonic bladder. Literally, it means like no tone. Well, with what this person can result with is someone with atonic bladder, they have what we call overflow incontinence, where the, the bladder will just slowly drip because the bladder gets full, 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 and it just kind of forces that internal urethral sphincter open and the urine just strips out drop by drop. And the reason is, is the person has no micturition reflex. Because what the issue is, is we have damage, say for example, these sensory fibers. So if the bladder's filling, you're not getting that information to the spinal cord one, that person's not going to be aware that their bladder is full. And two, you don't have the reflex where it triggers the motor impulses to help with emptying of that bladder. And so you get this overflow incontinence. Um, that could happen if you've got um, uh, damage to those sensory fibers. They actually call it sensory atonic bladder. Um, um, I'll keep it there. We'll use that one. So uh, sensory atonic bladder. That could happen um, with a number of different conditions. Um, uh, not well managed diabetes mellitus can cause peripheral nerve damage. Um, mul uh, multiple sclerosis can cause that too. So there are a number of different things that could cause atonic bladder. Now the second one, so I don't have a really good picture to, to uh, show you um, automatic bladder. But think of this as like reverting um, your bladder back to when you're an infant. So you, you still have that um, the circuit that's going on right here, but the problem is um, you don't feel the urge to go like you did before. But your body knows, hey, dot, the bladder's distended, let's go. So you will automatically urinate. So you're gonna be continent. So the issue is you have a um, it could be caused by a transection of your spinal cord above S2, 3, and 4. So here is that the um, sacral um, micturition reflex will occur automatically, but you don't have the information being sent to the brain, and you don't have that voluntary control of micturition, so that's lost. So there's automatic evacuation of your bladder. And the last one is uninhibited um, neurogenic bladder. Actually, I'm gonna go back here so we can fill this in a little bit. So automatic bladder, you do have your reflexes, but you don't have control by the brain. Now the last one is referred to as uninhibited neurogenic bladder. So with this one is you have partial uh, inhibition of um, the inhibitory impulses. So with this person, 
um, in a normal individual, say here, that bladder is pretty full, but we're not urinating because we have that control. Well, with someone with uninhibited neurogenic bladder, that the sensory information is being transmitted up to the brain, and when the bladder is not even that full, it's going to be, you know, said, okay, I have that urge to defecate, but we can't inhibit it like we did before, where then you suppress that urge to urinate. So they're going to have this amazing um, urge to urinate, frequently needing to urinate, even though the bladder's not that full. And then they're going to have, you know, they can, uh, you know, be incontinent as a result of it. They're going to have to rush to the bathroom just for just a, a sm relatively small amount of urine. So with this one, it's due to partial interruption of the inhibitory signals. They're coming from the pontine center. So they end up having frequent urges and relatively uncontrolled urination. They're going to have to rush to the bathroom. So some may recall that as an overactive bladder. So this could be, for example, um, a partial damage um, in the spinal cord above uh, T12. So it could be brainstem, anywhere along before T12 was just a partial interruption of those inhibitory signals. So that's going to be um, the last bit of the lecture on um, the urinary system.